against Bitcoin. It's going up forever, Juan. You're against Bitcoin, you're against freedom. Welcome to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live, your number one source for the peaceful Bitcoin revolution, cover breaking news, culture, matic warfare. We'll be your guide through the separation of money and state. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the most watched daily Bitcoin live show on YouTube, Rumble, and X. Welcome to Simply Bitcoin. Lots of stuff to cover on today's show. Uh, BlackRock's ETF, the ETFs in general, uh, make a comeback. It looks like Grayscale has been dumping their Bitcoin. People have been dumping the Grayscale ETF, and it's putting a lot of uh, downward sell pressure on the market. But they made an enormous comeback. This is exactly why we went from 62K back up to 70,700. I think we touched uh, and now we're sitting at 70K. So look, we're literally like 2K away from all time highs. This is, uh, you know, this we're very close to price discovery mode. I think it's going to happen a lot sooner rather than later. Also, another news, I was kind of like going back and forth and I saw a lot of you guys in the chat asking about this. I was like, should I make the title about BlackRock or should I make the title about Jack Maulers? But Jack Maulers went on an epic little like rant or speech and he basically revealed what his portfolio is. And uh, it's very similar to what Simply Bitcoin's portfolio strategy is, very similar, similar to what my personal portfolio strategy is. Uh, but it's really not that simple, but I understand how a lot of people can see it as complicated because we've been living in this upside down fiat world where you are forced to become a part time investor just to maintain your purchasing power on a Bitcoin standard. If you're saving and earning in Bitcoin. You don't have to become a part-time investor. You literally buy Bitcoin, earn Bitcoin, mine Bitcoin, take that Bitcoin into self-custody, and that's it. Simple. You can do whatever you want. If you're a dentist, you know, if you surf, if you make content, life becomes a lot easier because if you earn any type of wealth, right, or if you earn any type of money, you could just, you know, save it for a rainy day. Bitcoin is savings. Bitcoin makes it simple. In fact, if you spent so much time in the fiat matrix, Bitcoin is so simple. The Bitcoin strategy of stay humble, stack sat, stay solvent. It's so simple. It's complicated for people. In other news, also, we're going to do a little quick update on the EU and their recent measures with the, I'm going to call it the draconian uh, AML and KYC requirements. We're going to have a little update on on for, for you guys on that. And of course, this just came out on Reuters uh, this morning, quote, swift planning launch of new central bank digital currency platform in the next 12 to 24 months. So ladies and gentlemen, the future in front of you is Bitcoin or slavery. When I say slavery, of course, I'm referring to the central bank digital currencies. That's going to give like a godlike power to the bureaucrats, to the government to basically get to dictate what you can and what you cannot do for your money. So it's really, really important to stay on top of of, you know what the other side of what the other side is doing the party of green remember guys is not left versus right it's not red versus blue it's the party of bitcoin the party of orange versus the party of green the party of fiat the party of optimism the party of prosperity the party of hope versus party of nihilism sla slavery and uh all the bad things under the sun. Anyway, it's going to be a great show, ladies and gentlemen, and we have some awesome guests today. Uh, but first, I'm going to bring up my co-host, who's always optimistic. That's why they call him Optimus Fields. How are you doing, Opti? I'm doing wonderful, man. Optimism is a superpower in clown world today. So you got to stay optimistic. And then, of course, we're Bitcoiners. Like life, how can we complain? We we got the best money in the world. We got the best operating system in the world. And then we can look out at the rest of the world and be like, man, y'all are crazy. What is going on here? Just simplify your life, man. Just simplify your life. Stack Bitcoin and chill. It's the, it's the easiest Bitcoin life to be that, a part dude, of, We got to brand that. Stack Bitcoin dude, and chill. Dude, it's the easiest thing to ever do. And, and back to kind of what you said in the beginning, and I'm glad you're going to play the Jack Muller's clip. This is literally the show I tell everyone. I, I think I even brought it up yesterday. I was having a conversation with an Uber driver and she's telling me, she's like, oh yeah, I trade stocks and I'm trading cryptos and I'm watching the charts and I'm like, 
I do not want to look at charts anymore in my life. I just want to stack Bitcoin and know that it's going to go up, that my purchasing power is not going down. It's so simple. We, we live in this world now where we love to complicate things. And when you give them a simple answer, they're like, no, that, that can't work. We got to do all this financial trickery to get rich. And you're like, no, just save in Bitcoin. It's literally this easy. Anyways, 100%. let's get up, let's get our guests up. Yeah, or- before we get our guests up, I do want to give a very quick shout out to the super chat. Uh, Will M, I appreciate the two dollars. I have arrived. I'll replay after. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it, Will. Thank you so much for supporting the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, no more delay. I do want to bring our very special guest, and of course, we got the boys from the BTC Prague <laughs> conference. We got Martin and we got Mateus. How you doing, guys? Thank you so much for joining us on Simply Bitcoin Live. Hey hello, everyone! Hello. Thank you for hi, the hi. invitation. Hi, the boys <laughs> and and the brothers. Yeah, we talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys joining us. It was awesome seeing you guys at Bitcoin Atlantis in uh, Malaita, Portugal. It was really nice meeting you guys in the flesh, and I'm so happy you guys. Uh, Join, are going to join us today on, on today's show. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, these guys are the geniuses behind one of Europe's best conferences, the BTC Prague Conference. Uh, you guys have an amazing uh, lineup. Are you drinking mate? Yes, yes. Oh, what you have mate <laughs> over there? Oh, my God. Okay. Hey, it's uh, important. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what are we going to talk about today, Opti? Well, I asked them before the show, you know, I like to get some pre-notes. Obviously, we're going to talk about BTC Prague, the conference that's going to happen in June. But uh, they're telling me that they want to give a little history about, uh, you know, Czechoslovakia and why Czechs are such ardent Bitcoiners. And I think there's going to be some good context for you guys. So I'm, I'm excited for this one. I love history lessons. Wait, it's Czech, hold on. It's not Czechoslovakia. It's the Czech Republic. Oh, the Czech Republic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hashtag Opti <Abdi's> stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. We are, we are used to it. Yeah. Oh, man. Hashtag I'm an American. I went to public school in America. Oh. Oh man, yeah. dude. That, oh man, that's embarrassing. Okay. Uh, but yes, we're going to talk about Prague. Absolutely beautiful city as well. And uh, we're going to talk about the conference. Lots to uncover. Guys, strap in. It's going to be a great show. We have a lot to talk about. Guys, before <laughs> someone in the comments, Opti is stuck in the 1980s. Oh man. All right, guys. I wasn't even born yet and I'm still stuck in there. Oh man. All right, guys. Before we jump into this, though, I do want to give a shout out to our lead sponsor. And of course, I am talking about our boys over at Bitcoin Well. Bitcoin Well is the best place to build your automatic self custody Bitcoin stack. It's a publicly traded company coming out of Canada that recently expanded to all 50 states. And that's right, it is self custody by default. You can't buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin Well unless you are going to take self custody. Let's make self custody the default all over the world. And uh, guys, check out bitcoinwell.com today. I also want to give a shout out to the Bitcoin jackpot contest. Currently, the jackpot is over 3 million Satoshis. The way you enter is by going to bitcoinwell.com slash contest. If you're an existing user, you can go to the reward section, and uh, if you enter into the contest, you have an opportunity to win the jackpot. And of course, uh, we'll, we've we have been giving away all these prizes over the last couple of weeks, like a passport hardware wallet, a book by Seb Bunny, and we gave away seed plates as well. So, guys, check out the Bitcoin jackpot contest. Every time you buy Bitcoin on Bitcoin, well, you earn some points. You could put it to the jackpot. Uh, you know, what do you have to lose? You stack some sats and you have the opportunity to win more sats only on bitcoinwell.com slash contest. All right, everybody, no more delay. Hey, I love this. I love this message. I have to pull it up. I have to pull it up. Make self custody great again. Amen. <laughs> self custody by default. Bitcoinwell.com. All right, everybody, let's get to the numbers. Let's do this. Here we go. The Bitcoin numbers. Is your Bitcoin in cold storage really secure? Is your seed phrase really secure? Stamp Seeds Do It Yourself Kit has everything you need to hammer your seed words into commercial grade titanium plates instead of just writing them on paper. Don't store your generational wealth on paper. 
paper is prone to water damage, fire damage. You want to put your generational wealth on one of the strongest metals on planet Earth, titanium. Your words are actually stamped into this metal plate with this hammer and these letter stamps. And once your words are in, they aren't going anywhere. No risk of the plate breaking apart and pieces falling everywhere. Titanium stamped seeds will survive nearly triple the heat produced by a house fire. They're also crush proof, waterproof, non-corrosive, and time proof. All things that paper is not, allowing you to hodl your Bitcoin with peace of mind for the long haul. Stamp your seed on Stamp Seed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I made it incredibly easy for you guys. You could scan the QR code on your screen right now to get you directly to the Stamp Seed website where you can use promo code SIMPLY to get 15% off. Guys, store your generational wealth properly. Don't, wa don't write your 24-word seed phrase on paper. Put it on titanium. And I've seen this talked about in the comments. You don't send your seed to Stamp Seed. They literally send you a Stamp Seed <laughs> kit so you could do it at home in the privacy of your own home. It's absolutely awesome. They give you a hammer, the actual little things to stamp the seed in. There's like a back plate. It's absolutely awesome. There's custom uh, seed plates as well. Check out their website. Go to Stamp Seed today. All right. At the time of recording, the Bitcoin price is 69930 Sats per dollar, 1430 Block height, 836388 Blocks to having 3612 having estimate April 20th, 2024. Total Lightning Network capacity, 4,343 Bitcoin. <laughs> Stamp seed in the chat. Go pull it up, Opti. Pull it up, Opti. Pull it up. Stamp seed in the chat. Opti went to Rockefeller Fiat School. Don't blame him. That's actually so funny you say that because we just had our boy Daniel Prince on uh, to talk about fiat schools. That simply Bitcoin IRL is going to be dropping tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyways, having estimate April 20th, 2024, total lightning network capacity 4,343 Bitcoin, capacity value 303 million US dollars. Real monetary inflation 1.73 percent the market capitalization of bitcoin one point the yeah 1.38 percent one point three eight trillion and the bitcoin versus gold market cap 9.96 percent almost 10 percent i hear that once the bitcoin market cap reaches 10 percent of gold there's a tear that goes down peter Schiff's face anyways ladies and gentlemen i do want to show this epic, epic video by Jack Ballers. I mean, Jack Maulers. Uh, and look, he says it best. I'm a simple man. We are simply Bitcoin. It's really that like there's 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 a method to the madness. There's a reason that we called this show simply Bitcoin because it's literally just simply Bitcoin. It's really that simple. And uh, seems like Jack Maulers is on that tip as well. He says, I'm a simple man. I own my business, the roof over my head and Bitcoin. That's it. That's my portfolio. Everything else is short Bitcoin. No, thanks. Let's check it out. I don't own anything outside of Bitcoin, my house and my company, period. Because that and we have internally at Strike, we actually have this culture where the cost of capital is Bitcoin. So it's like mm -hmm. we don't we don't have a culture where people are like, oh, man, we're doing so well. We really want to hire all these people or we really want to get nicer, nicer desks. We don't have that. We as a business, we just stack sets. That's because that's it. That's it. It's like everything that you spend capital on that isn't Bitcoin is your short Bitcoin. So for me personally, this is how I live my life. It's either an experience I value with people I love or it's a, a home, a place where I can build experiences and take care of people that I love. That's it. That's it. I eat ground beef. Uh, it is. It's crazy. <laughs> but like I remember, I mean, my girl who's, you know, wasn't initially a Bitcoiner when I met her. And initially you're like, oh man, you know, you want to get a place in my, no, 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 no. I get, I get homes if I live in them. I don't get real estate. I don't get fancy clothes. I don't get anything outside of sats. That's it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not buying fucking Balenciaga fucking, no. <laughs> Shorting Bitcoin. For pants. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, he's absolutely right. And then uh, let's put the let's put the uh, let's put the actual, you know, don't trust verify behind it. He's absolutely spot on. If you know, if, if you're buying something else, you're short Bitcoin. 
And if you actually take a look at the numbers, you guys know that we love this website, Price in Bitcoin 21. Uh, yeah, I mean, everything gets cheaper. Housing, it gets cheaper. Look, yeah, average house in the United Kingdom, 92% cheaper. If you've been living on a Bitcoin standard for five years, uh, house in the US, 87% cheaper. Uh, commodities, uh, propane, gasoline, natural gas, oil, all 90% plus cheaper. If you've been living on a Bitcoin standard, precious metal, this is for you, Peter Ship. Gold has gotten 92% cheaper if you've been living on a Bitcoin standard. What about fiat? Same thing. Dollar, 94% cheaper. Uh, I mean, look, I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. I look, this is personally the life philosophy that I live on, right? You know, obviously, you need a roof over your head. Uh, you know, you need, uh, you need the basics, I would say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, like, I, I think I saw a post actually on Nasser by American HODL. Like, I mean, look, it, it's <laughs> someone in the chat. <laughs> Stock market, Mike says, pants greater than Bitcoin. Yeah, 100%. If you have pants. Oh, Bitcoin greater than pants. Bitcoin, pan, greater, than Bi pants. Bitcoin greater than pants. Yeah, that's right. If you <laughs> have pants, if you still own pants, you are short Bitcoin. But <laughs> if you get arrested for walking around without pants, it is not my fault. I didn't say that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, man, I, I 100% agree with the way that Jack Maulers is approaching it. Uh, maybe it's a generational thing, Opti. Maybe it's a generational thing, man, because I've seen this. It's a little bit different. I've seen, I, I don't want to name any names, but let's say I've had, uh, people <laughs> on, uh, the, on IRL two weeks ago uh, on IRL that, you know, are like, look, like, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to buy the nice things and you're going to buy the thing. It's like, dude, I can afford the nice things. I just like, you know, I would rather have more sats. Right. Um, so yeah. And I saw Hoddle Hoddle say something very similar on Noster. Uh, and literally it was, it, and again, it, it, what's interesting is if all these people are kind of saying the similar, a similar thing. Uh, then I mean, I don't think it's just one person feeling this way. Uh, here is, here's Hoddle. He, he tweeted this about a day ago. This is on Noster. He said after American Hoddle, he says, after having a little money for a few years and dabbling in some of the finer things, I could tell you that nothing beats an ordinary life. Getting a slice of pizza and seeing a movie with your wife, hitting the bar and having drinks and conversation with your friends, hanging out at the park, throwing a Frisbee around, taking kids for ice cream on a hot summer day. An economy plane ticket to go visit family or an old friend, a reliable car that takes you where you need to go, a great blanket to snuggle in, snuggle up in on a cold day. If you have these things, trust me, you're wealthier than you know. Drinking $1,000 wine and eating caviar with famous people won't make you any happier. In fact, it may, it may have the opposite effect. As the Bitcoin price rises, you should definitely dabble in fancy shit if you feel compelled. But once you get a peek behind the curtain, You'll find out pretty quickly it's hollow and meaningless compared to the things that really matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I live in Miami and I can fucking 100% attest <laughs> to what American HODL just said in that. Uh, uh, look, it's pretty simple. Life is pretty straightforward. If you can put food on the table for your family, if you have, if you put a roof over your head, if you do what you love, if you have a purpose to get up in the morning, you know, uh, I, I think you'll be happy. It, it, life is pretty straightforward that way. And what's awesome about Bitcoin is that, you know, it, 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 it gives you the tool. It empowers everyone to live that life, that live, live the life that they want to live, being able to provide for their family, being able to put a roof over their head. And I think in the fiat world, I think that's impossible. You can't have that life as long as money's stealing from you. Um, and this is more, this is, this is, you could see this more in countries that don't have, uh, you know, the financial privilege that we have in the West, that we have relatively stable fiat currencies that are not stealing from us enough for us to, for the vast majority of the population to notice. Uh, but yeah, man, Bitcoin fixes this, you know, fix the money, fix the world. And, uh, you know, just stay humble. This is what about humble. This is what humble is being all about. Look, Mahler's is, you know, the CEO of one of the most successful Bitcoin companies in the industry. And he's a simple man. I'm a simple man, too. Opti, on the other hand, he's going to <laughs> he's going to get leopards and gold chains. Opti, could you pull up your picture? Because that, that shit's uh, yeah, absolutely I hilarious. Have to find it. Pa pass it to the guests. But, and then, but, uh, uh, but I, I will say this, guys, like the the high life. Uh, the, the, the Miami life, the Lambo life, it's, it's very overrated. Life has a lot more purpose, 
a, a lot more things to make you happy. Start a family, have kids, do what you love. And uh, yeah, if what you love is driving Lamborghinis, then okay, fine. But I would say 99% of people don't fit into that category. And we pass it on to Martin first. So wait, before I do that, this is what happens when uh, Bitcoin hits, uh, you know, 100K. This is Opti. Um, but uh, the, re the rest of us, uh, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> the rest of us live a little there bit There will be signs, right? There will be there signs. There will be signs. There will be signs. But, but let, hold on. Let's back up. That's in like 20, 30 years, man. Uh, Can't your boy <laughs> live after a certain point? Oh, man. All right. So, Martin, no, what's but your... Nico, I, that, does, does living in Miami instead of Czech Republic means that you are shorting the Bitcoin? Yes. Yes, 100%. Yes. I want to get the F out of here. I've been wanting to get the, the, the F out of here. See, see, Miami is an interesting place because it's so much fun. And it's so alluring that, you know, you could literally be doing the same exact thing for like 10, 15 years. And what happens is that it's an effing time machine. So your body ages, right? And you see the people around you getting older, but you're doing the exact same thing. And uh, it's just as fun. So Miami's a bit of a trap. It's a great city to live. But at the same time, it's the most fiat fucking city on the face of the planet. And if you if you move here uh yeah it's uh it, it's uh it's you're definitely short bitcoin if you live in miami so I'm trying to trying to get the f out of here anyways uh martin i hope that answered your question yeah, yeah, yeah you answered the question you are more than welcome to join us here man and i <laughs> believe that you're gonna be surprised how welcoming and how many opportunities and options you have here and as we told before the live show that Nobody gives a, gives a shit in Czech Republic. So you can really do whatever you want. Be happy, stack sets, be humble and still enjoy and not being like uh, sorry for yourself that you are short on Bitcoin just because living Fiat Miami style with no offense, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah throw them under the bus. I, I definitely don't. I definitely I definitely don't live the Fiat. Uh, the the Miami Fiat lifestyle anymore. Uh, nice in the suburbs. I uh, go to sleep at nine p.m. You know, I get worried about Opti if he stays past if he's if he's out. And you about. don't sleep at all. You text me at like one a.m. my time. I, bro, I'm nocturnal. I I, I worry about things. <laughs> um, but I'm I what I'm trying to say is I relax. Anyways, uh, Mateus, what what are your, what are your thoughts on this man? Uh, what are your thoughts on what Mahler's said? Do you agree with him? Do you disagree? I absolutely agree and uh, I believe that Bitcoin has a great side effect that it humbles people like some people are natural for uh, being humble and if they make money uh, in different business they still um, do the same stuff and enjoy the normal life which is great uh, I, I've been living on on the village I, I like to grow my own vegetable and it doesn't matter how much money I have how much Bitcoin I have I will be still doing the same shit you know um, sorry to swear. Um, don't want to ruin your algorithms. Uh, but uh, no, I absolutely agree. And uh, uh, the portfolio, like once you decide or realize that the Bitcoin is so strong, you don't want to spend anything uh, what is not necessary because you just uh, you just know that it will get 10 times uh, less expensive, 10 times cheaper and 100 times cheaper. So the time preference, uh, the side effect of Bitcoin is that you learn about the time preference and that changes everything. A hundred percent. Yeah, the, the time preference, right? Miami is definitely high time preference. Uh, is, is Prague, is it safe to say that Prague is a low time preference city? Hmm. Good question, man. I, it, it go, you need to maybe just judge case by case you know the city center the old town that's definitely like a uh, high time preference a lot of clubs a lot of parties a lot of tourists uh, spending a nonsense amount of money on like standard stuff but if you go like out of the city center i believe that checks are mostly humble ones you know um definitely compared to like miami standard yeah i would say Okay. Okay. But you can definitely find low time preference areas. Is that safe to say? Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. We okay. have many villages, many small villages where people still live um, in a self-sustained way. They, they like to grow their own vegetable after work, <clears throat> they work on the garden and, and, and they craft something. And I would say that's, that's a sign of low time preference. 
Amen to that. Amen to that. All right, guys. Well, we have a Wait, let me get my take before you cut me uh, off again. No, no, uh, no. Here. Okay, fine. If you're going to give your take, we're going to have mine. this up. There yeah, yeah, fine. That's fine by <laughs> me. That's fine by me. Again, guys, hey, let your boy live a little bit. Just a little bit. Like, well, I think we all want cheetahs. What's going on here? Uh, no, but but seriously, uh, what what Jack, what Jack Mollage was saying, it's like same. Literally just own Bitcoin, uh, simply Bitcoin and like recording gear. I, I don't own anything more than that. I have a shitty toyota that i think it's like I, I don't even know when it is it's like 2007 or something like that like it's older than bitcoin it's it runs i i just need a car to go from point a to point b um and i have had this thought experiment with myself i i maybe i even said it to nico one time where it's like look guys ask yourself right now if, if you're doing what you love if you're doing what you really enjoy in life you know if you were gifted 10 million dollars right now like what would you do my answer was like, I just like buy more Bitcoin. Like that, that, that's the only thing I want is just more Bitcoin. Everything else is like, yeah, you want to enjoy your life. You know, even Jack Mollard's kind of said, I want to, the only thing I spend my money on is experiences. And I, the only thing I spend my money on is like food. That's, that's all I really care about is like eating some decent food, eat, getting steaks. Like, like that's about it. And I think this is definitely a, a thing that we are, experiencing and coming up against with the fiat world because everyone comes for bitcoin because they all want to get rich right like everyone has the meme came for bitcoin for the money stayed in bitcoin to fix the money and we're so used to complicating our lives to be everyone be an investor in the fiat world that once you start to simplify your life and accumulate Bitcoin, you realize a lot of the things that you kind of want, you're just like, I really don't even need this. All I really want is more Bitcoin. And as long as like even the auto post, I saw that this morning and I was like, yeah, shout out the auto. You know, he's always kind of been like a big brother where he's gone through the experiences and then he'll be like, you'll have to like you'll go through this soon. And when I read that this morning, I was like, man. Your boy's blessed right now. Like your boy's thriving right now. It feels so good. And it's just because we're on the Bitcoin standard. And then I just want to touch on uh, Jack Mahler's at the very end of that. He's like, if you are buying Balenciaga pants, you are shorting Bitcoin. Like couldn't be me. Absolutely hilarious. But to be fair, though, Jack, Jack Ballers has some pretty fly um hoodies so you know he owns some things he's got some fresh hoodies out there i know you guys are seeing his hoodies he's got some good some good hoodies over there so hey he owns a few things Op more than just bitcoin Op opti opti doxing opti doxing hey, you guys opti seen him he's got fresh hoodies speaking of hoodies guys if you want to support the show oh, make sure to stack some sats first but go check out our new collection we teamed up with a bitcoin artist called asanoa and uh we have different like check this out the peaceful bitcoin revolution shirt we got the gold bitcoin gold bitcoin pill shirt we got a gold bitcoin snapback we got a gold bitcoin dad hat we got ladies merch as well it's flying off the shelf so get yours while supplies last uh, go check out our new collection. You can scan the QR code or check the link in the video description. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the news. The Daily News. I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Foundation Devices. It's self-custody done right. They built a premium grade hardware wallet called Passport right here in the US. It's fully open source and verifiable. It's the most intuitive Bitcoin wallet designed with a UX reminiscent of a simple feature phone. So you will know how to navigate it and use it the moment you pick it up. Get your Bitcoin off exchanges and into your, into your own hands in just a few minutes. Experience the peace of mind that comes with taking ownership of your own keys. After a massive sellout during Bitcoin Miami 2023, the Passport is back in stock at foundationdevices.com. Bitcoin only, open source verifiable, completely air gap security model, gorgeous design craft, premium grade materials. If you're thinking about getting your Bitcoin off exchanges, this is the one for you. Check out the passport link in the show notes below to learn more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I made it incredibly easy for you guys. You can scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you directly to the Passport by Foundation Devices website where you can guys get yourself an open source Bitcoin hardware wallet. Remember guys, not your keys, not your cheese. All right, ETF update. These guys are just stacking the corn uh rave elevator if you fix check engine light you are short bitcoin <laughs> that is absolutely hilarious hey safety is a priority bro okay um 
Anyway, so MicroStrategy stack currently at 214,000 Bitcoin. Marathon, 16,930 Bitcoin. Grayscale Bitcoin Trust currently sitting on three. No, whoa, whoa. Yeah, the Grayscale, 350,000 Bitcoin. If you guys zoom in a little bit, you see that little like literally falling off a cliff. Uh, that's the down. That's where the down downward sell pressure. That's where it's coming from. The good news is though, is that Grayscale can only sell that Bitcoin one time. So once they run out of Bitcoin to sell, you know, there's that's it, right? And the halvings around the corner, absolute scarcity. Uh, you know, and it just kind of builds this uh, perfect situation. Currently, the BlackRock Bitcoin uh, Trust continuing to stack sats like crazy. 243,000 Bitcoin. Fidelity seems to be going a little bit sideways. 136,000 Bitcoin. Anyways, uh, here is the downward sell pressure. This is literally what caused the dump uh, that you, we all experienced. I hope you guys had an opportunity to stack Bitcoin at 62, dollars $63,000, uh, but it was coming from GBTC. And uh, you guys can check out this chart by HODL15 Capital. The inflows have been mostly green on most on most of the days, but on March 18th, 19th, 20, 21, 22, and uh, yeah, and 22, the outflows have been red. And uh, this is again, once again, this goes back to what I was saying about the grayscale trust. Uh, people are just you know dumping dumping their grayscale. They don't like it. Maybe they're trying to move over to BlackRock, another ETF, because uh, you know uh, they 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 give better fees, right? But anyways, again, once Grayscale runs out of Bitcoin, once people, you know, you know, get sick or they, they get comfortable with it, you know, that stops. Anyways, so it looks like it's flipped green finally. And, uh, you know, that explains the run up. Here's an article uh, literally called finally Bitcoin ETFs are making enormous comeback. Those are big words. Anyways, it goes on to say Bitcoin ETFs are finally making a comeback with net outflows turning into inflows thanks to the market recovery. After a period of consistent outflows, a change is here signaling a potential trend change for Bitcoin. According to SoSo Value's latest data, the Bitcoin spot ETFs have received a substantial net inflow of 15.7 million, disrupting a five-day sequence of net outflows. In stark contrast, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust experienced a single-day net outflow of $350 million. People are really trying to get rid of Grayscale. Leading the charge in this influx is Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF, which alone accounted for a remarkable $216 million million dollars in net inflows not far behind was blackrock etf with a commendable net inflow of 35.48 million in one day such movements on the markets may suggest we are on the cusp of a significant rally reversal potentially laying the groundwork for groundwork for bitcoin's growth investor sentiment as reflected in etf inflows often precedes broader market trends implying renewed confidence in the assets future now all that being said all that bullish news News being said, remember, ladies and gentlemen, the having is in less than a month. I think it's uh, let me check Clark Moody's dashboard right now. It's currently April 20th, 2024. So in less than a month, the downward sell pressure from the miners is literally going to get cut in half. Not to mention, if you take a look on the amount of Bitcoin left on exchanges, it continues to go down. This really hasn't happened in uh, in Bitcoin's history, right? Uh, usually what tends to happen when the price of Bitcoin goes up, usually the amount of Bitcoin on exchanges tends to go up with it because people want to sell their Bitcoin. What we're seeing this cycle is the exact opposite. As the price of Bitcoin has gone up, the amount of Bitcoin leaving exchanges has gone down. So there's literally not enough Bitcoin to go around. Again, we're in uncharted territory. Bitcoin made an all-time high before the halving. So I, I got to say, man, I feel it. I'm extremely excited about this cycle. I think it's going to blow uh, a lot of people's minds away. Uh, like I said, we're in uncharted territory, but it it's extremely exciting, man. It's, you know, uh, I see the I think the that's the the little thing behind you, right? The 21 million, it's infinity divided by 21 million. And uh, Wall Street is just waking up to that reality. So it kind of explains why Mahler's, uh, you know, is acting the way he is. It kind of explains why, you know, you got to live below your means to stack those sats, because if not, you're short Bitcoin. Anyways, I'm going to start with Martin. Martin, what's your take on this, man? The Bitcoin roller coaster been going up. We've been going down. How are you doing? How are you feeling? How are you uh, liking the Bitcoin roller coaster? 
Yeah, up forever, Laura, right? <laughs> it's going up forever, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, man, uh, I don't like to tell what the price of Bitcoin going to be because it's hard. If you say something about the price of Bitcoin, you are on the same side saying what the price of the dollar going to be. So if Bitcoin going to be one million dollar, does it mean that Bitcoin is uh, so great or the dollar is so useless, you know, or maybe 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 both? I don't know. But uh, I'm super optimistic. There is no better thing to save our money in. So come on, you know, I won't be doing BTC Prague. I won't be here. I won't be working for Bitcoin like crazy if I won't have like such a big trust in it. And it actually seems like a nonsense for me. How is it still possible possibly that people are waiting for 12K to buy, buy for <laughs> Bitcoin, you know? I don't understand it, but, but come on, yeah. Yeah. Um, I believe that we can ex expect like only great years and great months or I don't know. But uh, the future is exciting from my perspective. 100%. The future is exciting on a Bitcoin standard. Guys, we have a thousand live viewers between YouTube, Rumble and X. So if you guys are enjoying the show right now, make sure to smash that like button. If you see it on Rumble, there's a little gray thumbs up. And if you smash it, it turns green on YouTube. Smash that like button. And on, on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, you can just heart it. It really, really helps with the algos and helps us push the orange signal forward. Anyways, I'm going to pass it on to Matias. Matias, what are your thoughts on this? man are you enjoying the bitcoin roller coaster the etfs really definitely change uh change things up oh yeah well i am in enjoying this of course but uh, regarding the etfs like i i don't have like real educated opinion on it other than i i have no idea who is still selling bitcoin uh that's <laughs> yeah. that's what uh, what really bugs me and um I'm a, I'm I'm really for self custody, so this is not not for me. Uh, but still, it will bring some new people um, into Bitcoin, so I would consider it net good. Also, it will maybe uh, bring some more um, like uh, defend to from the regulatory perspective. Like now, now they cannot like shut down. Of course, they they couldn't shut down Bitcoin even before, but. This is a great argument for normies. Like you, you can say, yeah, now even uh, there are even Bitcoin ETFs. Yeah, now the governments will cannot really shut it down if BlackRock uh, is buying Bitcoin. So um, I'm considering really bullish news, but it's it's not for me. A hundred percent. No. And, and I agree with that. This is uh, simply Bitcoin. After all, we, we only recommend spot Bitcoin and uh, taking that real Bitcoin, not that captured Bitcoin and taking that Bitcoin into cold storage, into self custody. But on the price levels, you know, the ETFs do play. I think uh, I think they've definitely influenced the price a little bit. And I think that's why, you know, we've we've run up the way that we have run up uh, specifically before the halving. It's never been done. It's never happened in Bitcoin's history. We've never broken all time the highs before the having and i think that has to do with the etf so i completely agree with you matthias from the revolutionary aspect from the self-custody aspect who cares about the etf they're not really important and of course from the price standpoint yeah i think they're they're a positive uh definitely positive on the price level definitely captured bitcoin that the the bitcoin and etf but i love the way that you that you uh framed it from the regulatory standpoint once you have blackrock in your corner uh, you know, you're a politician, you're going to have a hard time uh, passing something that's going to hurt uh, BlackRock's bottom line. Anyways, Opti, uh, what are your thoughts on this, man? Uh, you know, some uh, some Bitcoin roller coaster news. And then we're going to talk about the EU regulations. I'm really, really curious to hear what uh, Martin and Matias have to say about that. Yeah. So uh, just on the ETF, like at large, you know, I think at first we were all super excited about the ETF. And now I'm kind of I think I'm getting like blackpilled on it. I'm like, man, I, there's there's a, a non zero chance they're going to do some rug pooling with some paper Bitcoin. Obviously, there's some legalities there. And I'm like, man. I don't know how I feel about BlackRock buying up so much Bitcoin. You know, they're like <laughs> they're, they're like the, the main problem here. But as a Bitcoiner, as a consensualist here, I understand that, you know, Bitcoin's for enemies and, and Bitcoin's for anyone. And so there's nothing I can do to stop this further. 
we knew that this was going to eventually happen. So like, it's not a surprise, but uh, we're, we're Bitcoiners. We like spot Bitcoin. We think you guys should be holding Bitcoin directly. This is the way opt out of the whole system. Do not trust the middleman. It was literally in the white paper. There's no need for the middleman. There's no need for the ETFs, but I understand if you have a bunch of money in the fiat system, then yeah, you might want some Bitcoin exposure and then hopefully you can rotate out. So like I get all the, the nuance here, but of course, as a, as a, you know, a cult member, Member Maxi, quote unquote, it's all about buying spot Bitcoin. But the very interesting part, I think, about this whole thing is just how much Bitcoin uh, Grayscale has dumped or rather how much Bitcoin has rotated out of the GBTC and then gotten bought up by, you know, retail Bitcoiners and the BlackRock ETFs and the Fidelity ETFs. It's like they've dumped so much Bitcoin. Maybe it's just rotating into another ETF. And yet the price is uh, it, it's doubled in this time. And we got the halving in less than a month. It's like, man, I, I really don't think people understand where this is going. And it's going to be a crazy ride as a Bitcoiner just watching the price action. We are starting to enter price discovery mode. And that's when the FOMO is really going to kick in. This is when our jobs are going to get that much easier. And then also that much more complicated because we're going to be going into this like eternal September moment where we got a, an influx of new Bitcoiners that are trying to learn. We're going to be going over the same FUD stuff, answering the same Bitcoin questions. But hey, this is our job. This is what we're supposed to do is educate people and accept the ideas of why Bitcoin is so important in today's world. And so, man, it, it's just it's it's such a fun ride being a Bitcoin, even though there's, you know, the roller coaster of Bitcoin. It's like we're Bitcoiners. We, we're, we're living, quote unquote, in paradise right now. Like we got the best money in the world. We got the best, uh, you know, best diets. We have the best perspective on the world. And then everyone else is just like running crazy. It's it's, it's like literally the the dog in the fi- in the house on fire meme. Like this is fine. Like this is all perfectly fine. I I'm out of the fiat system. You know, I just stack Bitcoin and chill. I enjoy my life. I I have purpose. I like life is great on the Bitcoin standard. And just to wrap this up, it reminds me of something I say I was saying constantly last year that like you are a walking billboard for Bitcoin and just the fact that you're living a good life and you're and you're showing people the best way to use Bitcoin. I think that is the best way to spread the Bitcoin message. And as we start to see more cracks in the fiat system, more people are going to look to us and understand or rather try to understand why you're living a good life, why you are happy. So the TLDR is, guys, just don't let your friends buy spot uh, Bitcoin ETFs. Make them buy spot Bitcoin. This is the way. This is how we win. Just continue doing what we're doing. 100%. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I would maybe just add one thing, you know, that I realized that maybe we should consider and understand that uh, with ETFs, we're going to face diff- completely new use cases in Bitcoin now. You know, it's not only about the privacy, self-sovereignty, uh, let, let's kill the fiat, you know, there are new people coming into it with definitely new intentions, with new use cases because of the ETFs. Now they can trust it from their perspective. They can finally trust it. It's like legal stuff. It's, it doesn't, it's not going to die like Bitcoin died many times. And, you know, with this being said, I believe that we have switched from like early adoption phase to the early majority phase. And we probably would need to get used to that there are going to be people that would come up with to reach us or reach, reach us with questions we won't expect, you know. We probably won't face such a questions uh, in context of Bitcoin till now, but ETF changes this completely. Uh, 100%. I, I, I don't like it at all, to be honest, but it's inevitable, you know. What can we, what can we really do about it, yeah? Yeah, it's yep. a Bitcoin is the money is the money of enemies. Anyways, I do want to talk to Matthias and Martin about this. Uh, this is something that we've been covering over the last couple of days. Uh, the news we broke on Friday and they finally passed it uh, yesterday, I believe. But uh, basically the EU to vote on new draconian AML package for service providers on April 22nd. Uh, it goes on to say the sweeping AML package aims to eliminate anonymous cash payments over 3,000 euros in commercial transactions and prohibit prohibit cash payments above 10,000 euros in business transactions. It would also require AML slash KYC checks on all Bitcoin payments to custodial wallets 
operated by regular regulated service providers. I believe this is an example of regulatory creep. And this is how they start. And then eventually they're going to say, hey, you know what? Uh, those that self custody Bitcoin, uh, we can't have that. You can't withdraw more than 3000 euro, the equivalent of 3000 euros at the same time. So Mateus and Martin, you guys live in Europe. You guys are building a Bitcoin business, a fabulous Bitcoin business in Europe. And, uh, you know, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this regulation? Maybe maybe I start. I start uh, from from the individual level. Um, I would say this this just uh, brings us to to the to the time when we really need to think um, as an agorist, uh, just looking for a tools which will help us to go around these uh, draconian measures. And also, I believe that nothing um, has to be eaten so hot as we cook it. Yeah, so it's not like entirely true. And and Twitter makes uh, a lot of um, a lot of noise around around this stuff. I, I also read some some uh, thread regarding this. Maybe I'll, I'll link it later. Um, but back to the algorithm. Um, I really believe that we should um, buy Bitcoin um, without KYC. So in the future we will not have uh, have this problem with. Uh, with the regulators um, and and just normalize coin join um, and then if if everybody will be doing that it's it's uh, the, the law is only uh, their uh, thinking if we don't accept it and there will be many people like us um, they cannot they cannot um, uh, like uh, what's was the word um, uh, yeah, they cannot uh, judge us, and and um, they can't. They can't. It's unenforceable, is what you're saying. Yeah, thank you. That that's the word I was looking for. It's not unforceable. It's not forcible. So we just we just need to uh, put our middle finger and 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 go around. Unfortunately, it's not for everyone, and many people are afraid. Um, but I I think that um, this is a learning experience like everything else in our life and and we need to be strong and and don't be lazy and try it and uh on the end it's not so so difficult to go around 100 percent, martin what's your take on this man yeah i completely follow and i will maybe add uh, one different perspective that uh actually you know this is just another proof how detached those uh those guys are from the reality you know they 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 know nothing and uh I, I actually understand why they are doing such a steps. Uh, I don't like it, but just being like a devil's advocate, I understand why they are approaching uh, AML and KYC approaches in such a manner because they uh, they can really feel that they are losing their ground, that they cannot build on on anything stable, you know, for the for their for their fiat future, and maybe another perspective of it this is a this is just another great example of european union acting uh, in the way that it seems like to be like the greatest example of of unsustainability ever you know uh it seems like maybe legit from their perspective but come on you know it, it solves nothing so uh but it it, it helps the bitcoin it probably gonna uh, end up with more people using non kyc bitcoin which which is uh, which is the best what we can get from the bitcoin to buy peer to peer sell sell build peer to peer support circular economy and use it in like a uh, normal ways uh we are not there yet but uh, i believe that such a steps which european union are considering to be like uh, empowering them are actually working for us maybe not from the long term perspective but from the uh from the short term perspective but from the long term perspective absolutely 100% yeah they the the I love that the bureaucrats are the biggest uh, Bitcoin, uh, advertisers, you know, the more they clamp down, the more they, they try to, uh, keep people in the box, uh, the more people are going to seek out, you know, a, an alternative. Uh, usually when you, when you have to build a wall to get people inside metaphorically, uh, that usually isn't the, the best system, right? Uh, when you try to coerce people to keep people, uh, do you try to coerce people to play by your arbitrary set of rules rather than, people wanting to use it because of the incentives, then uh, you, I think you have some self-reflecting to do, but I think, you know, power hungry bureaucrats and politicians that have had this monopoly of, 
being able to control money and it print money for free that everyone else has to work for. Um, I don't blame them for trying to uh, wanting to retain that power. Anyways, uh, let's get to the culture. We have a lot to talk about uh, with these two gentlemen here. Let's do it. Here we go. The Daily Culture. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Kaboom Racks. They are the most trusted place to buy, sell, and host Bitcoin mining equipment. You can check out their racks by checking the link in the video description or scanning the QR code on your screen. If you, you can buy uh, mining equipment with them, check out their inventory on Telegram. You can connect with a member of their sales team. They will make purchasing e the purchasing their products easy and transparent. You could also sell your mining equipment with them, access their vast network of domestic and international customers when you sell your mining equipment with Kaboom Racks. What are you waiting for? Start your Bitcoin mining journey today. This is where I personally buy my Bitcoin mining ASICs. Check out Kaboom Racks. All right, Opti, it's all yours, my friend. All right, let's go. All right, boys, so they host BTC Prague. But before we get into that, I think it was Martin. I, I have a goldfish memory. You were telling me that I think a good place to start here is some context of, of why you guys are ardent Bitcoiners. So let's start with there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, for it, Opti. Uh, yeah, I believe that, yes, uh, actually... Telling why, BT, why we do BTC Prague and why Prague is actually Bitcoin capital of the world maybe requires everybody to hear some kind of the context and uh, that will definitely put everything in the right perspective, you know, because we as a Czechs, we were always like uh, freedom fighters, you know, we gained our freedom, we lost it many times, we fought again and again. So I do not really want to give you like a history lesson here. So I'm going to try to make it short, like a one or two minutes. But the whole story basically starts even uh, sooner than in 15th century, actually. And it was like a, a de the great defenestration of Prague when corrupt officials were actually thrown out of the town hall windows. And that marked an early struggle for religious and civil liberty already here in Czech Republic, you know, and it happened. 200 years after again, you know, so in 17th century, there was a second defenestration in Prague. And again, like 200 years after later, uh, in 19th century, we worked uh, to emphasize Czech language and identity, which ended in the revolution here in Prague, when we finally get gained some independence from the German monarchy. But uh, Czechoslovakia will finally establish actually at the end of the World War I. So that leads us to the year of 1918, when we finally feel, feel felt like being like free because the Austro-Hungarian Empire was, uh, was collapsed, basically. But you know the history, so not for too long, uh, because from the beginning of World War II, we got fully occupied by Nazis. We lost <laughs> of we lost a significant part of our, our land, so we basically had to strive again. After World War II, we felt like, okay, yeah, finally Czechs can be free, but uh, Soviet Union troops felt maybe different, so they invaded us in '68, stayed here for another 20, 20 years uh, with the oppressive communist regime. There's not a single nice perspective on top of this. But, you know, Czechs, actually, we are like, we like to work for our freedom and we fought hard. So in year 77, we uh, came up with the Charta 77, the manifesto signed even uh, with Václav Havel, our first uh, Czechoslovakian uh, Czech Republic president. And we demanded the government to recognize at least some of the basic human rights, which was maybe like the first very peaceful step for the Velvet Revolution, which actually happened uh, 11 or 12 years after, in the year 1989, basically a few weeks uh, after the Berlin Wall went down. And uh, I do not really want to go into real details, but those were just the few like most important points of our history where we proved ourselves to be like freedom fighters. We love our freedom. and. With this being said, I believe that, you know, just uh, considering Bitcoin and how, why we are so, uh, so strong in Bitcoin and why Prague is the capital of the, of the Bitcoin world, that this was just a nat natural 
uh, evolution of it. You know, that Bitcoin is just another tool that helped us to do the stuff we do for for ages, you know, and uh, maybe Matthias can help me to to uh, put like the Bitcoin history in the real context. But this was just a natural escalation of, of our freedom fighting for already like 600 years, basically. Love it. I love it. All right, Matthias, you want to you want to jump in here? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So so Ma Martin covered uh, really the 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 uh, the history and this this kind of cultivate a craftsman culture in Czechoslovakia and then Czech Republic. So um, because in the communism regime, there was not enough stuff on the market. So people used to build their own uh, furniture and and repair stuff because uh, it was it was needed. And this craftsman culture, uh, and that's that's my opinion. Why why Czechs and Slovaks are so strong in Bitcoin? Um, this craftsman culture brought people together in very early days in 2009, in 2010, and they were geeking out um, and geeking around Bitcoin and coming with solutions um, to solve their own problems. So in 2010, there was a first ever uh, Bitcoin mining pool, slash pool. Um, which was invented in Prague. In 2012, there was a first uh, hardware wallet um, invented by Slash and Stick uh, from Satoshi Labs together with BIP39, the, the seed phrase. Um, then um, General Bytes is the uh, biggest manufacturer of Bitcoin ATMs that also happened in Prague. Uh, Brains, the mining company uh, operating Slash Pool until now mined more than 1 million Bitcoin as well from Prague, uh, still operating from Prague and um, or, or the, the three floor black building uh, Paralani Polis, uh, which is a base for cypherpunk thinking and anarcho-capitalist community operating since 2014 until now without fiat payments, only solely on cryptocurrencies. This um, these companies uh, and people have laid a very strong base for a uh, Bitcoin um, ecosystem. And you know how is it with Bitcoin. Um, if you need to know and understand Bitcoin, it takes time. So we started early and with the snowballing effect, um, we came to this point where um, we have a great community, very well educated with the right ethos. People know how to use Bitcoin privately, people trading Bitcoin peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, buying without KYC, uh, uh, keeping in self-custody, um, talking about freedom and using um, more advanced techniques. Um, and the community is, is huge. It's, uh, it's probably more than 2% of, uh, of the population of Czech Republic. The, the estimation is that we have probably like 200 until 300,000 of Bitcoin slash crypto users in Czech Republic with 10 million inhabitants in total. So um, that put us in a quite good position to actually throw such a big conference um, because we have a very good base of Bitcoiners for which is easy to come and create this great atmosphere uh, uh, because Czechs also make great beer, so this, this <laughs> helps a lot. <laughs> Yeah, and love, I also, it, love it. I also wanted to yeah, kind of yeah, I just wanted to just show off the 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 lineup because this is an extremely impressive lineup that you guys uh, managed to get together. So just to name a few of the speakers, you have Michael Saylor, you have Adam Back, you have Francis Puglio, you have Turda Meester, you have Alan Farrington, you have Parker Lewis, you have Anita Posh, you have uh, Martiti Malmi, yeah, and, and you have. Thank you. And then uh, you have, uh, of course, uh, Giacomo Zucco, just to name a few. So, yeah, man, this is uh, this is uh, there you go. There's the beer. Great beer and traditional <laughs> pubs. So uh, this is absolutely incredible uh, for anyone who doesn't know about the BTC Prague uh, conference here in the States. Uh, you guys definitely have to make this pilgrimage. Uh, it is one of the best, if not the best uh, Bitcoin conference in Europe. Uh, absolutely incredible. I've heard amazing, amazing things. How old is the conference? How how many years have you guys uh, been doing this? This is the second year, I believe, right? 
Yeah, this is the second year of BTC Prague, but we are not not quite. We are not really new in the in the Bitcoin event management, uh, as we have uh, our second conference, which is called Chain Camp. This is Czech only Bitcoin only conference, and uh, it, it's actually quite quite interesting that we we've realized that there's actually not a single Bitcoin conference already in 2019. So we've decided with Matthias that we're gonna organize one. But uh, you remember then. COVID, COVID, appear, COVID appeared, so we had to postpone the first year of it. But for some reason, we were like super lucky because we picked a date in the end of the year of 2020 when the restrictions were down here in Czech Republic for a week for some reason. I still don't know why. It was like a bit crazy, but we fit into that time frame. So as we were basically the only ones who organized anything back then, we got like huge traction from the beginning. Uh, attracted 450 visitors on first uh, check only bitcoin conference and uh the escalation then was like a pretty obvious so we doubled the numbers a year after doubled again the next year so that leads us to year 2022 when we had 2000 visitors on check only bitcoin conference still we have to consider that we are talking about the Czech republic so 10 million inhabitants that was a uh, probably quite impressive and we already saw some demand from like foreign speakers and foreign partners and even like visitors asking us uh, us like hey guys how we can come and contribute or what we can do together so we thought about it a lot and actually we've realized that uh, implementing like foreigners into our Czech conference would require us to move from the city of Ostrava where we organize it to Prague and switch from Czech to English and that would ruin the brand, you know. So we we realized that we definitely need to come up with another brand, which BTC Prague is. And uh, last year was the first year, year of it. It was quite challenging as we uh, set our goals to attract like uh, as much visitors as is needed to be the biggest in the Europe. And we had six and a half thousand visitors, 75 companies in the expo section. So I believe that Considering the bear market, uh, we have proven ourselves to to be quite legit, actually, and mostly we got behind the trust issue, which was which was the mo most most hardest on on top of the, all of this. Yeah, hell yeah, hell, love and it. And uh, we got a question from uh, Elaine pulling it up. What are the dates of the conferences? The dates of the conference is June thirteenth through the fifteenth. That's when the BTC Prague conference is going to happen. Uh, absolutely, I've heard so many great things about this conference, guys. As I can, uh, I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. Opti. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to maybe give the floor to Matthias and be like, okay, what's, uh, what's the TLDR shill for why people should come to BTC Prague? Why yeah. should me? Why should people make the journey from the U.S. and Canada, which is where most of our audience is? We have audience in Europe as well, but why should people make the journey to BTC Prague, Matthias? Thank you. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty easy. Like if you want to get to know all the European Bitcoiners, there is no better place than at BTC Prague, uh, because Europe is uh, is not so big, but we have so many different languages. The communities are really different, and each of the state, each each of each country, um, is behind their own language barrier. So we don't know what is the use case in Germany and what are the people like and what are Czechs like and, 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 and Bulgarians and Italians. Each of the community is a little bit different. And um, this realization um, is really important because um, we tend to live in, uh, in our own bubble. But uh, once you get the whole picture and unite, Bit under the the whole like uh, Bitcoin orange flag, this absolutely changed the perspective and it gives you um, um, gives you the ability to stack sats even harder. Um, so th th that's the pitch I would say: come and meet other Bitcoiners and and talk to Europeans because um, they are different. They are more um, more focused on uh, they are focused on different parts of Bitcoin. Um, we have four main topics. We focus on, of course, money. We focus on technology. Um, we focus on community and freedom. 
and uh, everyone gets something uh, what he likes on our conference. The conference is three day long, but we also throw um, one day uh, conference before the conference and that's Dev Hack Day. So that's only for 500 people uh, and only for like, let's say very technical users and people who like to uh, Friday brain uh, before the conference even starts. And, and then we have an industry day, which is the best uh, if you want to just meet uh, other people from the industry and maybe even look for a job. Uh, now is the time when, uh, now is the perfect timing to actually step out from your comfort zone and somehow contribute back to the Bitcoin. That's our mission for this year, bring more people, um, like strengthen the hardcore community because we feel that um, the the adoption will happen anyway, but we need more uh, hardcore users. We need more workers. Let's uh, let's say uh, because who else will uh, be working for the companies who are scaling up? Yeah. So um, we we like to say that we are building the bridges, and we would love to build the bridge between Europe and US. Amen. Love I it. absolutely love, love that, it. man. Love that. Thank Guys, you. check out the BTC Prague conference. We won't simply Bitcoin won't be making it this year, but definitely, definitely looking into making it next year. And uh, guys, incredible conference. Check it out. BTC Prague. Guy, um, I'm going to I'm going to pass it on to Martin. Martin, if you have any last words for our audience, what would they be? Yeah, thank you. I, I like when you say check it out, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes me feel proud. <laughs> No, but I believe that Matthias covered it well. I, I do not want to repeat himself, but um, and I'm biased. But from my perspective, you know, it's it's a no-brainer. You know, Europe is so different. It's it's really wonderful. And if if somebody uh, haven't been here yet, it's not only about the Prague, but uh, spending here a week or two, travel around. The distances aren't so crazy like in the US. You know, so you can easily travel many different wonderful medieval cities in car in few days. And again, the beer and the and the Prague and the vibe and the energy is like uh, really empowering. And having all of this with Bitcoiners around and hardcore Bitcoiners, like I believe that you're gonna be amazed, guys. Uh, it it, ma it makes me and I believe that even everyone around so bullish on Bitcoin, basically. Amen to that. Amen to that. We have a uh, Winekus in in the chat, <laughs> basically who runs the company. He's like, "We're going. What the fuck? Okay, <laughs> get the oh man, dude, so many places to go this year." Okay. Um, yeah, deal. Uh, but uh, the pure wine wants are, prog girlfriend. You heard it he here does. first. Of course he does. <laughs> Matthias, what what uh, do you have any final words for our audience? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, uh, let's fucking go. Never <laughs> under, underestimate the the power of individual. Uh, I was only a pleb a few years ago, and now uh, with Martin, we are running the biggest European Bitcoin conference. And it's just because we love what we do uh, and we we work hard. So just uh, yeah, let's fucking go and 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 uh, and don't be lazy. Study Bitcoin, stack sets, and uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to meet everyone in Prague. Absolutely. Work, work hard. Proof of work. Proof of work. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. I'm your host, Nico. This is my legendary co-host, Optimus Fields. And uh, these are our boys from BTC Prague, Martin and Mateus. Guys, check out BTC Prague. Go to their website right now. You have to go to btcprog.com. Get yourself tickets. There is going to be a ticket price increase in five days and 19 hours. So you want to get your tickets quickly, get all your accommodations set up again. It is one of the world's best Bitcoin conferences. So check out Bitcoin Prague today. All right, everybody. Love you all. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for a brand new episode of Simply Bitcoin Live. But before we go, one final message from the chad himself. Because they expect well, because they want to sell it eventually, desirable. Michael. I mean, let's be honest. Most of the people who are uh, yes, sure. Some people pass it on to their children, but like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. So let, I me, let me say it a different way. Okay. People that use fiat currency as a store of value, there's a name for them. We call them poor. Okay.
episode was brought to you by BitcoinWell.com, a Bitcoin-only platform on a mission to enable financial independence. <laughs>